Today's New Testament reading is the first epistle to the Corinthians, the 10th and 11th chapters. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. If one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, This has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it. For the sake of the one who informed you, and for the sake of conscience, I do not mean your conscience, but his. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. Now I commend you, because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions, even as I delivered them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, since it is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, But woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman was made from man, so man is now born of woman. And all things are from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a wife to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace for him? But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For her hair is given to her for a covering. If anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, nor do the churches of God. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Lucas Woodford. The Apostle Paul was a great missionary pastor, planting many churches throughout various regions, bringing many unbelievers to faith. But the letters of Paul also record how he was a wonderful pastoral carer of souls. The particular letter before us today is Paul's letter to the Corinthians. We have two letters recorded in our scriptures. The first one, chapter 10 here, Paul talks about and is giving instruction to the Corinthians about their Christian freedom and their liberty, as he talks about it, over against the idea of a burdened conscience, particularly when it came to eating meat that was sacrificed to a pagan idol. Now, this is a bit of a foreign context for us because we don't have any direct reference to it, but there's some important things for us to draw out about for our Christian life and living, about the freedom that we have being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into Christ and into our triune God, and the life that we live in that freedom. But of course, for the love of the neighbor, what things are we willing to do or not do for the benefit of our neighbor? Listen to these words of Paul again, of what he's telling the Corinthians. And remember, some of these Corinthians are new Christians Others are becoming more mature in the faith, but he's giving them some words of instruction about how to interact in the midst of a secular secular pagan culture. 
from chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner and you're disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, This has been sacrificed and offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. I do not mean your conscience, but his. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. So Paul here is informing the Christians about their freedom in interacting with other people, particularly pagans. Now, I think this is a great instruction for us as we continue to live in an increasingly secular and pagan culture. How do we go about living in Christian freedom while also seeking the good of our neighbors? So Paul gives us some great instruction. Now, it's a foreign thing, again, about eating meat sacrificed to idol. But it was very important that Paul make it clear. He does other places in Corinthians here as well, because their pagan worship involved their temple worship and sacrificing various things to pagan gods and then eating that food. So Paul does make it clear that if you're at that temple, you can't participate in that. You cannot participate in the table of a false god and the table of our Lord at the Lord's Supper, but rather you are to be dedicated to the glory of God, as Paul says. So that's how we go about it in our Christian life. So, for example, if an unbeliever invited a Christian at Corinth over to their house for supper, Paul says, go ahead, go eat. Don't even ask about it, don't worry about it. If they didn't bring it up, don't worry about it. But if they would say, well, this has been offered in sacrifice, well then, don't eat it, Paul says, because that is going to give them the impression that you wanted to participate in that pagan sacrifice or for which that meat had been sacrificed. And so don't do it because you want to give glory to God and not make them think that you were in agreement with their belief. So I think this is important for our times today because we live in a lot of challenging times today. We live in some confusing times, hopeless times for many people. People long for purpose and direction to know what's right and wrong. Our media-saturated and entertainment-driven society, good is often called evil, and evil is often called good. Truth is uncertain, morals are redefined, confusion abounds. It's all around us, regardless of where you live or where you work. We need to know what's happening in our culture. And we also then need to know the freedom that we have in Christ, that you've been baptized into Christ in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you have great liberty. Paul quotes simply from the psalm when he says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Reminding Christians that we have been given these many gifts from God. And we can't be faulted then if we're simply giving thanks to God for those gifts and participating in it. But if something comes up that would burden a neighbor, then we're invited to act in accordance with a clear confession of faith and not burden their conscience. And so we want to live with a good conscience and then give that good conscience to our neighbor. Because the reality is, having a good conscience is utterly freeing. Your emotions are unbound. Your mind is freed. And all of a sudden, the world doesn't seem so dark. It's easier to breathe. Your senses seem sharper. Your thoughts become clearer. Your feelings become fuller. And joy seems real again. Hope is on the horizon. And life can be lived. And you see... That life that can be lived with a good conscience comes from the freedom and the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. In His shed blood for us on the cross of Calvary and that life and that liberty that you have in Him. So you can live to the glory of God and for the love of the neighbor.